Rub up your engines! Well, here's what CNBC says are the best 10 cars bang for your buck buying used, right? And when you hear this list, you're going to laugh. The woman who wrote the article, Jessica Dickler, rated the Chevy Impala as the best 10-year-old car to buy. All right, this is the top of her 10 best used cars to buy, right, that are 10 years old. Now, this is why you need to watch guys like me, mechanics who've been doing it for a long time. I've been doing it for 54 years, and not journalists writing for CNBC that know nothing about cars. Chevy Impalas are junk. The engines go. The transmissions go. And if this woman thinks that is the best 10-year-old used car to buy, she should not be talking about cars because she knows absolutely nothing. They base these things on some of the most absurd things. I'm reading through these lists. I'm like, some of these cars were listed as bad because they have problems with the infotainment system. That's not a reason not to buy a car. Oh, the radio doesn't work. The infotainment system, right? What a bunch of nonsense. You can go out like I did with my wife's Matrix. It had a basic CD crap because it's old. It's an 07. I just took it out, threw it away, put in one of these Androids. It cost 150 bucks and it works fine. Is that a reason to downgrade a car to say it's no good? No, of course not. But these idiots, they take some of the stupidest parameters. It reminds me when my father was young and he worked for Remington typewriters. Well, you no today because nobody knows what a typewriter is but they used to have these machines you push keys manually a b c d and you type things up they weren't word processors right he was mad because the consumer report said the remingtons weren't good typewriters and they rated these cheap japanese ones at the time the japanese were making cheaper stuff in those days as higher and so he contacted him and said how come you rated the remington bad it's a quality machine he said well one of our tests is we drop at six feet on a concrete pile and see how it works. Well, a good machine, you don't drop it six feet on a concrete pile, right? The cheap one was so cheap, it didn't weigh that much. It didn't hurt it as much. What a way to test. You know, you got to see where's this information coming from. In this case, it's coming from a woman who obviously knows nothing about cars. A 10-year-old car, Impala, is the best one to buy. And on the best 10-year-old cars, the top 10, here's the list. It lists Impala as one, Prius, Civic, Kia Sedona, Avalon, Fit, Accord, Fusion Grand Caravan and Camry Hybrid. Grand Caravan's a clunker too, but if you look at that list, that's the top 10 10 year old cars to buy, right? It does not even have Toyota Corolla on there. And that would be probably my number one pick. You know? They run forever to go, oh yeah, maybe their infotainment systems aren't so hot, but hey, for 150 bucks, you can put an Android in, you know? It's not that hard to do. I got a video on it. Yeah. Don't listen to a lot of crap that these media people give you because they don't know anything about cars whatsoever and they go by some ridiculous parameter of what's important and what isn't. The fact that they put Chevy Impella as the number one 10-year-old car to buy, used, and didn't even include Corolla, shows they know zip, nada. They're actually in the realm of negative information. They're giving out false information. So please, don't listen to these people. They don't know what they're talking about. Will Parsley says, Scotty, my Ford Dash was destroyed after I took it in for an airbag recall. I bought my Ford Fusion the Grapevine Ford to have the airbag recall done. When I got the car back, the dash around the airbag started to lift up and the airbag cover is popping out. I took it back and they said, no, that's a problem with them. The problem is the dash cover, not the airbag. We're not fixing it for free. Thanks, Scotty. Help me out. Yeah, you know, this is the reason that I personally never take cars back to dealer for recall stuff. I fix it myself. You know, I'm a mechanic. And even in my grandfather's day, when we all we had were Fords and Chevys. We never took them into the dealer for a recall because we we knew they were going to do a half-assed job fixing, probably break other things. And of course, like they did with you, they tell you you need all this other work in the car to try to sell you a bunch of crap. We just fixed it ourselves. We didn't care, you know. We didn't even bother taking it back to them. But you get crap like that all the time because realize, you're taking your car for a recall. Then you, know, you may not know this, but the mechanic who's doing that work gets paid almost nothing because the dealership isn't making any kind of a profit on it. And so they don't pay the mechanic hardly anything for doing the work. So of course they're going to rush things. Things are going to get 
broken. And in that case, they did the airbag recall, but then they cracked it. It's all broken, the cover. And they said, well, that's the cover. The cover's not covered. You think in good faith, well, yeah, we broke it. We'll put it back on. No, 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 that's not covered. That just, you know, these things, that's happened to those things. They do that. Even though you brought it in and it wasn't cracked. Hey, here's what you need to do next time, which is what I warn people all the time. Go in, you get worked on your car. Take a picture of the car outside and inside with your camera on your phone, right? It's there. It'll be there forever. Then you come back and they'll say, well, it was that way before. You say, oh, no, it wasn't. And you actually have to do these things. That's how disreputable these people are these days. So cover your own hineys. If you do have to take it in, walk around the car with them watching, filming the outside and the inside. Then if anything's wrong, you can say, it wasn't that way. You guys broke it. You're going to fix it. Adley Jan says, should I buy an 09 Volvo C30 with a replaced engine? The owner says, a hose popped off. It overheated and he worked. So he had a used engine put in. It was put in at a Volvo specialist in our area in August 2022. Now, since it was replaced in August and now in mid-December, the owner's selling the car. I'm kind of wondering, what should I do? Who knows what kind of shape it's in, right? And the guy had to put it in and then months later, he was selling the car. The whole thing sounds fishy to me. You do say it was done by a good Volvo specialist, right? Have them or a guy like me, check it out before you buy it. And they can honestly show you, okay, look, this car's in good shape. Or actually a guy like me who has no vested interest, I don't sell cars. I don't specialize in one particular make. So I'd always want the customer to buy that make. So even if the make wasn't that great, well, that's what I work on. I'll make a lot of money fixing it, right? So a lot of times, even though a specialist understands them, they're kind of contrary that, hey, they want you to buy a Volvo so they can make money fixing it. Me, I do them all, so I don't care. I'll tell you the truth about any model. I even told a guy the other day that his Cadillac wasn't that bad, even though I can't stand them, you know? Get it checked out first. And if the guy says, yeah, it's good, good shape, but there could be a lot of hidden crap. He had that engine put in it. It's used, which is a gamble. Now he's getting rid of it, so kind of makes you scratch your head. So get it checked out before. They can be good vehicles, yes. But realize, it's an old car. It's an 09. So have a guy look at it. See what he says. And if he says either the engine or tranny's if he don't even think about it. Well, Harrison Jr. says, why does my fuel economy drop? I got an old five Toyota Sienna with 200,000 miles. I used to get 23 miles a gallon. Now I'm getting 17. And this happened at about six month time. The local garage says it's running too lean. They changed the mass air flow sensor, but it's still getting horrible gas mileage help. Not wanting to be a contrarian. That's not too logical because if a car is running too lean, that means it's lean. It's having less fuel than it needs. In which case, it would get better gas mileage, not worse gas mileage. I've had people bring me cars that were running too lean and they got good gas mileage and he wanted me to fix the running too lean. And I fixed it. So it went to zero. Instead of running lean, it was zero. It was perfect. It wasn't adding or subtracting fuel. But then they got worse gas mileage because when it was running lean, it got better gas mileage. I would start with a different mechanic. Now, I know Toyotas. And in the case of that thing, sometimes it's as simple as you get some of Bernie's ATS, guy in Albuquerque, fuel cleaner. Put it in. Drive it around 200 miles. You might find that'll clean the injectors, and if they're dirty, they dribble instead of making a nice cone-shaped spray. They're dribbly. They get worse gas mileage. Sometimes something like that is that simple. Now the other thing is count your shifts. You got an automatic transmission, right? That's all they make it. in. Count the shifts and make sure it's shifting into all gears. Because if it doesn't shift through all the gears, you'll get crappy gas mileage. Because the engine will be at higher RPMs. Watch that. See if your tack is running higher than it used to. If you're on the highway and it used to run at like you know 2,000 RPMs. RPM at one speed, and now it's a lot higher. It's not shifting into high gear, and of course, that will destroy your gas mileage because the engine's spinning too fast. Joey says, hey, Scotty, every time I push my clutch and I hear a crunch noise, even I don't shift gears, what could it be? Well, you need a new clutch. Here's the thing. The clutch has various pieces of pressure plate, a disc, a throwout bearing. Some of them have another bearing in the transmission. Buy a kit and replace them all because you got to pull the transmission off the engine to do a clutch job, and it's going to cost you well over a thousand bucks to do that. So change all of them. You can get a kit for 150 bucks for most car, good aftermarket kit with all the parts. Change them all. Now, if you don't care about the noise and it works okay, what the heck? You can keep driving it because when it does break, you're going to replace all the parts anyway. I know people live with noise for years. Let's say it was your throwout bearing. Why would you change just the bearing when the other parts are all worn? Change it as a kit. You're paying all that money, labor, do it right. Well, I guess it is true I have magical powers. When your viewers emailed me yesterday, 
day. And he said, Scotty, I ordered their friend Bernie's ATS cleaner for my engine oil to get the carbon out and for the fuel system to pour in a fuel system to clean out the fuel injection system. And I haven't got it yet. Uh, could you please help me out with it? Okay, so he sent me this email. And I told him, I said, I'll contact Bernie because he's a really nice guy. And every time somebody's got a problem, I contact him and he clears it up and the people get it, right? Well, lo and behold, I sent an email saying, I'm going to contact Bernie. I didn't contact him yet. I was getting ready to. I was still answering all the questions you guys sent me, right? But about five minutes later, I get an email back from him and it says, geez, Scotty, you must be some kind of miracle worker because five minutes after you responded to me, the cleaner showed up at my house. So I must be a miracle worker, you know? Somehow it flew through a UPS and five minutes later, there it was at his door. Now, most people would say it's a complete coincidence, but hey, you never know. You never know. <laughs> but in that vein, you ever have problems? Hey, you know, email me. Let me look through it. Let me help you out with your problems. That's what I'm here for, you know? Mistakes get made. Bernie's got a very honest company. He's a very good guy, make good products. But these days with shipping and handling and all kinds of nonsense that goes on in the post office and between where they make it in your house, things go wrong. Hey, honest people will fix their problems. So contact me when you do. I doubt if it's gonna happen that fast, but you never know. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell.